السلام عليكم سيدي وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله what you have just spoken about is this the rapture as what some people call <clears throat> how to put it in a nice way <laughs> that with all respect these people what they believe shaitan has played with everything when in lord of the rings is a very spiritual movie except for any bad or inappropriate scenes you know the good is always from Allah the bad shaitan's got to put his finger into everything <clears throat> it shows people that when someone is intoxicated they make no sense to sober people. So when you go out with somebody who's inappropriate if you were younger and mashaAllah the Muslims they don't drink and the other people they make fools of themselves. But when they start to make fools of themselves when you're not intoxicated by shaitan you think to yourself how the heck do people believe like that? That the spell of shaitan is so powerful on them makes no sense. They say a man is God, that same man went to the wash facilities and the wash facilities Mawlana Shaykh would describe was not like ours a nice chair, was an outhouse with a hole and that they say he's God, then their God sleeps. So what happens when he sleeps? Does the command collapse? Then their God eats, so he's in need of sustenance. Then their God got killed but he rose again. Who was running the show when he was killed? Because we have a God that never sleep nor slumber overtaketh him. Why Allah gave us this phrase? When the concept of a human being God was not prevalent at that time to this extent except for the room because room and Rome, Allah gives the immensity of the Qur'an, Allah gave to us that, watch out for these guys. They give these attributes and they say humans are… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Gods, but your God neither sleep or no slumber overtaketh him. How can the Creator sleep, be tired, not vigilant of His creation? And one example Sayyidina Musa had difficulty with Allah in that, how come when punishment comes like everybody goes? Why you don't selectively take certain people? When your anger comes you kind of like wipe out the whole town. Said, Ah Musa, I will tell you. And he started to walk, he went near a tree and sleep and slumber had overtaken him. He fell asleep. And as he's sleeping Allah made an army of ants to start climbing up his legs. And as they're climbing up his legs Allah gave the command for the first ant bite him. And the <laughs> first ant bit Nabi Musa and he said, ah! And he sm smashed the whole line because one ant had bit him and then 
Allah as He woke up, He looked and He thought, He contemplated and Allah said, this is your answer. Why you didn't smash one ant? That as soon as you, you got angry you took the whole row of ants off your leg. But deeper than that is that the state of sleep and slumber that how could it overtake somebody and how could you be in control in that state? And what Allah calls to us of divinity that is ever vigilant over creation for just a, a lapse of a second of a second, look at the atoms and electrons. If Allah wasn't vigilant over creation the movement of electrons are moving at such a rate of speed and moving across each other. My electrons with the next person's electrons are like trains moving and not colliding. If the Creator slept those electrons would have smashed into things until He regained and woke up, astaghfirullah. So a people whom are so intoxicated that they give the most vile human attributes and call it a god. So anything coming from that source is so intoxicated with the corruption that it's, it's, it's hard to, to make reference to anything that's being taught from that reality. So whatever was originally taught by Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam salam is nothing from what's out now. And we described before in the rules of Risalat you can never change the laws of a Prophet. The false Prophet was Paul who was Saul and he wanted to throw the nation of these people whom they deviated from Judaism and throw them to the Romans and let the Romans play with them and deviate them and make them the Ahlul Bidah that they became. So this, this, this is a completely different system and different understanding and, and they have deviated so far that uh, even what little belief shakes the throne of the Divinely Presence in which you attribute uh, the, the sanctity and the purity of God Almighty and demote it to such horrific human attributes, sleeping and having waste and needing food. These are all against the understandings of divinity, the why Allah would need to be sustained and all of these attributes. So Allah gave to us the purity of belief that nothing sustains Allah and Allah sustains His creation. Allah is everywhere but nobody can see that presence. So the, the power that Allah has given to Islam and the realities of Islam. Now if they know something of, uh, of vanishing it has nothing to do with what even they think they understand. There's no escape again in a ridiculous thought that they have, the difficulties coming and they're escaping. With, with what training they're escaping? Who's coming to make them to escape? Now if you take from Sufism and you're telling me that a community who trained with shaykhs they discipline themselves to not do bad things, not talk bad ways, all the disciplines of tariqah come train with the shaykhs on how to connect your heart at any moment when difficulties come, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem the shaykhs can move and can move people away from that difficulty and put them back where Allah wants them to be. That's not what they consider rapture, they rapture they, they think they can do anything they want they'll vanish and they avoid now all the collective punishment and difficulties coming upon the earth. No we don't have anything like that where you can just escape again accounting. Somebody died for us therefore we don't have to purify ourselves. We don't have to go through the tribulations of the difficulty of what our own hands put upon this earth. No there's no escapism, you, you've got to face the judgment and you have to face the, the bed that you made. You can't escape things and you can't blame somebody else and say, somebody else will die for me and uh, I'm escaping again. 
that's convenient for people that don't want to do anything and purify anything. So this is it, we have to purify ourselves, fix ourselves, clean ourselves and then ask for the intercession of Prophet to pray for us and, and to clean us on what we couldn't clean ourselves inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi it seems these days people do a little meditation and then they think they are the Mahdi or Sayyidina Ali or these high personalities. Is this mental illness or is there some spiritual dress happening? Yeah I, 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 I think that bo- mental illness. That how, how to say because uh, anytime you deal in spirituality you're going to deal with some element of people whom are not grounded and you know that's why we gave the other talk that somebody will come to us and say, I'm spiritual and we gave the talk then you're telling me your beast is wild and you think you have spirituality but I trained all my life. My beast actually attacks me in my seclusion. If I let him go wild it becomes a ravaging dog that will eat me, attack me and and definitely kill me. So at every moment I have to be vigilant that if I give this guy too much he's coming after me. Because spiritual people have trained they know what they're talking about. Somebody else doesn't understand you're, you're telling me this beast you can let it do what it wants and then you will ride it. So that that's absolutely absurd. So that's the problem is as a result they come and they just start to fantasize and the beast is giving them visions. Why? Because the beast wants to kill him. The beast gives him vision, the beast makes him think like this, the beast does all of these things so that one day the person destroys themselves and the beast is happy because the beast was shariq with shaitan. One at a time shaitan has so much patience that says, oh One at a time take these people out, don't let them to become checkmate. Where they end up in Allah's kingdom, He crowns them, they come back onto the earth and make problems for shaitan. He wants to get them before they can reach who they are. So then this is the great struggle in our lives is you got to fight shaitan at every every ability. And in your meditation you say, I'm nothing. And in your meditation only visualization is the shaykh, not Imam Ali, not anyone because Imam Ali wouldn't accept it He'll tell you, focus on your shaykh because you're cutting your shaykh out, that's tariq al-adab. No no one will tell you to do that. So when they do it's not that personality because all of them are teaching this adab to us. That connect with your shaykh, connect, why? Because it's, you're not going to imitate him, you're not going to falsify that he's telling you this or that because he's right there. Then he gives you talks and says, no you were wrong. Then he say, email and he says, you're absolutely delusional, that's not correct. So you can calibrate what's coming. If they didn't keep that discipline how could you calibrate who's talking to Imam Ali No you can't, as a result that would be complete anarchy. So Allah has a system that they in the heavens have implemented upon the earth. That don't talk to us, connect with the shaykh, make sure that the shaykh is present with you. Now how do you progress is that you connect, you connect, your your connection is so powerful for the shaykh that you actually vanish in the shaykh and the shaykh takes you to the presence of Imam Ali But you have had to have reached that fana and that your characteristic is very soft, very beaten down, very humble, lots of service, lots of khidmat. So all of those characteristics they became nothing like a like cotton as a result the shaykhs is, is dressing them and they're lost within that reality. The shaykh will take them to the presence of the shaykhs, to awliya, to holy companions and that connection is what's the real connection. Otherwise. The world of imagination is the, is the world to avoid, you know turn right when you get to that world, don't go into the world of imagination, inshaAllah. 
السلام عليكم سيدي وعليكم السلام A lot of information about Sayyidina Mahdi you just shared is not found in our books. How do we educate ourselves and our families correctly? What you just told us is astonishing. Allah bless you and you're not supposed to find it in books. You're supposed to accompany a shaykh. What, what from any of our teaching have you found in a book? So this is not the first, it's the you know one of many. Because this knowledge is not from books, it's not something I read because I don't read Arabic. So we are considered ummi, we're not somebody who's Arab, Arab trained and Arabic trained and taking ancient Arabic text and reading you ilmu huruf, we are ummi. What they put into our heart we put out to teach. So this is a system that has its own validations. Had I been somebody who was fluent in Arabic then maybe I could have read many different Ibn Arabi books and Arabic books and uh, all, all sorts of uh, huruf books and I could have mixed my shaykh's teachings with a whole bunch of other teachings. But for this reality at this time they kept it something completely different. They said, no better he doesn't know Arabic like that so that he could never you know, author these things from himself. So these are its own validations, these articles, these teachings, they're not to be found. You know in classical teachings you'll find it, you, you'll see it even corroborates through the nat. You read the nat, these awliya they sang about it, Jani Rahmah all of that is our teachings. That the whole universe is in you. In all its all of Prophet is lost in a nukht. Everything is lost in that nukht. So all of Jani Rahmah and all these nat that we sing or all the teachings of awliya that validate these teachings because it's from the heart and from the oceans of haqqaiq. So yeah that's, that's a different system. Assalamualaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi in one of your sohbahs you mentioned that Sayyidina Mahdi has a red dress and beard. Can you please explain what the spiritual meaning Sayyidina of Sayyidina Mahdi has what? A red, red dress and red beard. Red, reddish complexion, red turban, yeah like uh, Bani Israel they describe like a light skin with a reddish freckly complexion, not the like Middle Eastern dark complexion, more of a reddish hue on the beard. But uh, alhamdulillah <coughs> again the importance like trying to describe Prophet physically, it's entertaining but its importance is, is not as relevant. The relevance of Prophet is to spiritually connect with Sayyidina Muhammad's heart. That's, uh, that's the importance because the soul and the heart is the in, in eternal reality to dress the servant. So that to connect with their light is the achievement, connect with the shaykh, you know, annihilate yourself with the shaykhs to do your practices, do your practices and eventually to enter into these oceans of fires and emanations so that to be dressed by these realities. When we look into that association that you see yourself in the dress of the shaykh and asking to be dressed with the shaykh and when you see yourself and you've accomplished that level of, I'm dressed with my shaykh, I'm nothing, I'm nothing that take us to Rosa Sharif in the presence of Prophet that uh, in the presence of Prophet always asking that I'm nothing and that I always see the symbol of Sayyidina Muhammad always in front and that all in black, black turbans or green turban but everything else is in black and don't look for his face. This is not a good manners to look for the face. So that I'm nothing, I'm not worthy of seeing your face and I'm asking that you dress me from your fires, keep me at your feet. 
And no difference with Sayyidina Mahdi that asking to enter their association and saying, Ya Sayyidi, Ya Sahib al Waqt Sayyidina Muhammad and Mahdi alayhi salam. Sahib al Waqt Sayyidina Muhammad and Mahdi salam. Even you can make hundred times a day, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad and Mahdi, Sahib al Waqt, Sahib al Unsur. And you make this salawat and it is a gift to his holy soul and that he takes that gift and sends back to you a durood and, and a light upon your heart and soul which is a red light. The durood sharif upon Prophet are green lights and the durood sharif and the salawat upon Sayyidina Muhammad al Mahdi is a red light that dresses the servant from the Sir and the understanding of the red and how to to struggle in the way of Allah inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Should we contemplate on being in the presence of Mashaykh and Rasulullah or we should be contemplating on the knowledge we get in the sahbah, how to sync these two? They're different. The knowledge you take, <clears throat> you're right, the other night we described it. The other night many people are taking the knowledges but they don't do the practices. So they know the knowledges, maybe they came and talk to you about the knowledges but they didn't do any of the practices, they're not unlocking the connection. The knowledge is the knowledge. So there's no, no, you, you, that meditation for the knowledge is after you've meditated with the shaykh. So it means every time you try to do your muraqabah, when we say muraqabah it's to connect. You have to connect with the shaykh, that has to be the, the, the foundation that I'm nothing, I'm nothing that keep your fires upon my heart and then when I connect and the connection becomes stronger and say, I'm nothing and dress me. And that I'm no longer in existence, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. You feel the dress of the shaykh, later then you can write and read from your notes and that my heart expand this knowledge is for me. So as soon as association begins the one who's been training is asking for madad. As soon as he comes to the room or in his couch wherever it is the association begins he asks for the madad of the shaykh so that I don't want to listen to you, I want you to come to me and make me to understand so that your ears are on my ears, your eyes are on my eyes and that your heart is upon my heart and every moment has to be in the madad. And at that time then when you're sitting with that madad you start to write then inshaAllah it expands these knowledges that are coming inshaAllah. The foundation for everything is the madad inshaAllah, has to be you know just like a second nature. Why? Because a day may come where you, you hear something of a difficulty, explosion, something happening, the madad has to be of a second nature, it comes right away and that becomes a time in which you hear the guidance of what to do and how to do and what, what needs to be done, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, the other day you spoke about cats. Can bad people use cats for evil things? Why is it that they always show that witches have cats and they are used for magic? Yeah, anything you're, you're assuming that when you see television they're teaching you something right? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> anything we see on TV is probably the opposite. So the horror movies they, they tell you put garlic in your house. Right? Because the shaitans love garlic, the angels don't like garlic. So they say, oh this garlic is a protection against evil. Considering the shaitan wrote the script, uh, yeah then everybody put garlic in their home, the shaitan's coming in and the angels are going out. So the same guy wrote the same movie about the other one, oh, oh don't get a cat because witches like cats and especially not a black cat. So then they all get dogs. Then shaitans come in do whatever they want. No, no it was the cat that was powerful and the black cat very powerful. I think Mawlana Shaykh had asked people, you get 40 black cats, 
So because in Cyprus you know there's a lot of attacks, a lot of guests, a lot of things happening. So they were like always amazing stories that these cats were everywhere, they were roaming and patrolling. And there was one cat that would patrol the whole area, he was like his patrol guard. One group of people, I saw one of the cats and all of a sudden looked back and it was a big red jinn with red eyes. So the, the, the different uh, spiritual beings, when we say jinn in this reference they're all mu'min and all believing jinn. So when you talk about shaykhs there are many students from the jinn world that are all around the shaykh trying to learn also. Because what they hear from his realities is different what, uh, what insan hears. They pick up the vibrations that are transmitted from the shaykh from his transmission and his connection. So in their associations are not the ten people but thousands if not hundreds of thousands of the jinn kingdoms and the sultanates of jinns. So when the shaykhs speak they're speaking at a much higher association whom understand the realities in a completely different manner. So same for the physical that many of the mu'min jinn will enter into the cats and begin to occupy them and operate through them to catch nefarious beings and to patrol and to do the work that they have to do. I like said their zikr is very powerful, their zikr is very healing. If they sense something is wrong they can come near somebody, their zikr can begin to heal people. And they can also catch many things that are trying to come into that environment. So yes, then Grand Shaykh Dagestani had an orange cat and a black cat and Mawlana Shaykh had asked people, get 40 black cats because he liked cats a lot but they were all different color cats around uh, Cyprus and all over Michigan, so alhamdulillah. And Prophet had immense love for cats, very, 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 very kind and gentle to them. <clears throat> so movies everything's opposite, so witches have cats. <laughs> Assalamualaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Is the condition we don't like on the outside world a reflection of what is inside? And does it compare to we will show them our signs on the horizon and within themselves? Yeah, all, it's all related. Yeah, the condition on the outside, yeah, again in reference to what? And show the horizon on the outside, inside yes because outside people can see but inside is very difficult for people to understand. But then also what's in the… what they spoke from their mouth is one thing but what's in their heart is, is even far worse. So all of these are in reference to inside and outside. But what we spoke about of angels around you change your condition of yourself inside for your outside condition to change and that before Allah's decree and uh, punishment begins to come. That's very important. So for people to believe there's an angelic force and this is by Allah in Holy Qur'an, there's an angelic force all around you begin to change inside. And so many stories of inside change and people were emailing, they liked the stories because it gave them sort of hope and there's many like that, that you change your condition inside. He said, if you write, if you write the knowledges your sustenance will change. So people are looking for du'as, you know, oh, this du'a, 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 this okay great but Allah is giving in Qur'an, I don't change your condition. So just because you asked for it because du'a is asking doesn't mean you're going to be granted it. But what Allah did say is if your inside condition changes, yes then the angelic force around you will begin to change your condition because you change what's in yourself. So they taught that hey one way to change inside yourself is start writing. As soon as you write the knowledges your rizq changes, your angels change. Who you are changes because now your kitab is, is writing the Muhammadan haqqaiqs, that's something big on the soul. 
that changes completely the, the reality of that individual, the owner of the individual. Then they meditate, they contemplate and all, all the spectrum that we talked about of light. Imagine you're connecting and, and the Muhammadan dress is dressing you, how do you even explain that? So then these lights dress a person, the angels all around them creating you know these energies and these pardes begin to move. There's a horizontal movement in a dimension that looks exactly like yours but the condition is different. That people can't understand, doesn't understand what it is. You'll see it in sci-fi movie, everything is the same but on this dimension all of a sudden something else has happened to you, something opened for you. It didn't open before and all the characters are the same. So and Allah works in mysterious ways and Allah provides from ways that people could never understand. So anything is possible and that's when you get to look back at your life and then begin to think, hey yeah you know I came with nothing, I followed the shaykh and my whole life opened up and I don't even know how it opened up. Many of them got homes and none of them had any money. How did they get homes? Because the dimensions and the energies and vibrations changed. So their lives are completely different, completely different. But when you're moving fast you don't recognize this, ah what is this? But the people of Tafakkur they always know, no I remember exactly where I was and I understand exactly how Allah has taken me through everything. Not even the words I speak are my own. There are even poetry from Sayyidina Jalaluddin Rumi about the Salah Siru where the servant was upset and upset, oh and he was talking to God and he said, oh yeah I gave so much in your way and immediately a voice came back and said, huh what you gave? I put the, the yearning within you to give to me, you can't claim credit for anything. And that's so true of our way that if you don't think like, like what we explain and you don't have the, the demeanor of what we explain, you're allowing your nafs on everything. You know we don't speak because uh, I'm clever, it's a gift from God. We didn't contribute and donate because I donated in your way Ya Rabbi, said, ah, you know cut your tongue first. I put the inspiration in your heart to do that. So don't take any sort of credit for what you do because if it was really you, your nafs would have jumped on it and stopped it. But when Allah wants to raise your honour, He provides the desire, the action, the door and boom you achieved it. Otherwise me left to me it would be disastrous. But when Allah does me it's perfect, it's fantastic, when I do me it's a disaster. If you don't believe that and think that then we put ourselves in everything, oh I gave so much, I did so much, I did like this, I'll do like that and you're, you're headed for disaster. The tariqah has to be nothing and to acknowledge everything, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi alil azim. Even the salah we're saying are nothing, imagine that every other thing we do is only by the hawla and quwwah of Allah inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam How do the mothers make connection when so much has now been placed upon us? How do we endure the fitna of deception upon our children? Forgive my poor adab. The mother should do, do it more, it seems like the, the question sounds like it's, it's harder. The mother should be even more powerful because she has already two spiritual openings because they're allowed to have children. So they have the power of creation within themselves and they have the yearning and the love for their children to be protected, all they do is connect. And as soon as they connect their energy becomes strong, the connection becomes strong and uh, they play their salawats, they start to put the salawats in the home, they begin to tell their kids make salawats, the father's busy at work. It's the mother who teaches the tariqah that make your salawats. Play the salawats in the house so that the environment is tariqah. The children come home they hear salawats are playing, the children come home they see the taweezes are everywhere. The children come home and the mom checks the, their shirt and their chest, is your taweezes on? Say, yeah my taweezes on. 
So what do you mean what do you do? It's your responsibility to arm your, your army. Your children are next in line so it's the mother's responsibility to prepare them, dress them and prepare them for the nation of Prophet That's why you see these, these mothers in these areas and these TVs, very strong, very strong. There's one guy who was a sort of old, his face is covered and he was coming out and talking. His mother was right behind him, came behind him and pulled his mask off. He says, if you represent Allah don't hide your face. Live and die in this way. They are strong mothers. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Do you have any advice on how to help with insomnia? Make salawat. Don't drink tea and coffee too late at night, uh, don't watch anything uh, disturbing, try to read before you sleep. So people whom are sensitive and sensitive to energy and thought and manic, they, they should shut off by like four in the afternoon, stop the drinkings, teas and coffees, definitely nothing with caffeine and uh, definitely no television, hypersensitivity to too much aggression, news, action shows, movies, nothing. Just shut your mind down so that you have like chamomile tea, teas and, and herbal teas that relax the, the body. Even they have uh, extracts of valerian root and, and all these different natural herbal extracts that slow people down. And as a result you start to read later in the night, read from the books so that they can make you to rest and to sleep. Read Qur'an but not when you're sleepy but a little bit earlier read Qur'an and then you can read the spiritual books so that your last thought as you enter into Allah's realm will be something spiritual and your soul goes in a spiritual direction. So that the last thought is not something manic and chaotic and that becomes the course of your spiritual dreaming all night long. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifu, salaamun al mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa siri surat al-Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.